Now, I want you to feel the difference when I put my body behind the kick. When I count to three, exhale. Strong! I'll be kicking you. This, uh, this thing you do. In Cantonese, Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist. was born in San Francisco on the 27th of November 1940, the year of the dragon. This combination of Eastern heritage and the influence of the West remained with Lee throughout his life and would lead to a revolution in the martial arts and action filmmaking. Kung Fu originated from the Shaolin Temple in about 600 AD. From that time, it developed into a wide variety of martial arts systems governed by clans, families, and rules of tradition. Hong Kong in the 1950s was a melting pot for these Kung Fu systems, as many mainland Chinese found their way to the island colony to escape war, famines, floods, and the communist push. It was in this environment that a young Bruce Lee first developed his love of the martial arts, and also where he first experienced racial prejudice when he found many Kung Fu teachers would not pass their knowledge on to him as he was not a full-blood Chinese. What uh, Bruce did, as, as, a, as a related to me, that uh, he could never learn from the top man. Because in those days, uh, Kung Fu practitioners were quite prejudiced and they didn't usually share the knowledge with other people from other styles. So what Bruce did, he knew that. So what he did would go to the second or the third or fourth man in the system and say, well, look at the, how would you like to learn Wing Chun? and I'll trade you uh, my Wing Chun knowledge for your praying mantis. Let's say it's northern praying mantis. And that's what he did, because he knew that the head instructor wouldn't teach him. Studying these different martial arts exposed Lee to the idea that all martial arts had something to offer, that no one system had all the answers. He moved a step further from tradition when he studied Western boxing at La Salle College and picked up European fencing from his elder brother Peter, a Commonwealth fencing champion. With this amalgam of martial arts knowledge, Bruce traveled to the United States in 1958. I met Bruce Lee in 1959. He had uh, landed in San Francisco where he was born and ultimately uh, through uh, Ruby Chow who uh, sponsored him up here. He came up here and, and uh, actually I met him through some of the former friends that had been working out with Bruce. The effects of the prejudice shown to him in Hong Kong were still with Bruce when he decided to break the centuries-old taboo and teach Kung Fu to non-Chinese at his Seattle class. This film is the only record of Bruce Lee's teaching at that time. There was some animosity against him teaching to outsiders because uh, they felt that uh, to teach the outsiders, uh, um, it was a situation where you were giving a lot of secrets away to people that were physically much bigger than we are and that they would be using it against us. Now, relate to me. Move, move, no, no, no. Move for the sake of moving. Relate to me, relationship, relationship. Well, a jar, open it up a little bit. Feel the wind blowing. Ah, the bird. You hear the bird chirping? Yes. It up, kick with it. Ah, oh, yes! Now, how did it feel to you? Like, I didn't kick, it kicked. Terrific! Now, once more. I liken Bruce Lee to Jimi Hendrix. Um, there was guitar playing before Jimi Hendrix and guitar playing after Jimi Hendrix. It was complete, the world changed for guitar players. Um, and the same thing uh, with Bruce Lee. There was martial arts before Bruce Lee and there's martial arts after Bruce Lee. You think a fight is one blow, one kick? 
until you can put combination together without even thinking. And you let her keep moving and to endure. Hire a bodyguard or lead a less aggressive life. Don't charge him blindly. You've got to listen. Listen. The film success that awaited Bruce Lee was still a long way off in 1964 when he started to write for the world's number one martial arts magazine, Black Belt. The owner of the company had seen him at a, um, a tournament and just saw his talent right off. And uh, they struck up a relationship and, and uh, he, liked his, he liked Bruce's ideas and where Bruce was headed with martial arts. And, and uh, throwing out the stuff that uh, didn't work uh, in self-defense and, and street self-defense and so forth. And Bruce seemed to really have zeroed in on this to, to, to uh, bring something new to the martial arts. One day uh, early in the spring, uh, Bruce came to me and said that he'd had a call from uh, 20th Century Fox that they wanted him to come down and interview for possibly the position of Cato. So uh, he said, what do you think? And I said, well, God, Bruce, actually, you got to go down. And so he went down there and... And, of course, uh, the rest is history. The Green Hornet lasted for only one season, but other parts followed, and Lee was convinced that his martial arts could lead to bigger things. At one time, he was given the offer to open up a chain of Cato schools around the United States, and uh, he said, no, that he didn't feel that's where it was at. And he says, I can expose my ideas, my philosophies through film, because he felt that film was the best media in which to educate the public. Using his home video camera, Lee recorded the staging of fight scenes to help him further develop his film craft. This rare footage shows Lee practicing with his friend and student, James Coburn. We trained a lot. I had a, a large patio outside in, uh, when I was living on Tower Road. We had a big old Spanish place. It was kind of a patio we trained out there. He, uh, he brought a, 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 a big bag, a tackle bag, and uh, so we had it hanging up out there using it for sidekicks. Saying, okay, now this is the way you do it. And he said, whoop, bang, and he, and he kicked this bag. I guess it was about a 150-pound bag. And it went flying out, <laughs> it busted it in the middle. It went flying out into the lawn. With these, it was filled with rags, and rag, we were picking up rags for months around there, little bits and pieces of rags. It was all over the lawn. And that was really an astounding, and it shocked him as much as it. He said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lee also collaborated with another student, Academy Award-winning scriptwriter Sterling Sillifant, on the script for the second episode of Longstreet. This program remains Lee's single most relevant cinematic work on his martial art, Jeet Kune Do. Now, what is this, uh, this thing you do? In Cantonese, Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist. Intercepting fist, huh? Or foot. Come on, touch me. Any way you can. You see? To reach me, you must move to me. Your attack offers me an opportunity to intercept you. In this case, I'm using my longest weapon, my sidekick, against the nearest target, your kneecap. This can be compared to your left jab in boxing, except it's much more damaging. I see. Well, speaking of a left jab... Oh, this time I intercept your emotional tension. You see, from your thought to your fist, how much time was lost? Not much. In terms of film, uh, uh, the distance from, from taking a swing and, and uh, selling it to the camera, you could be, you know, pretty far away, but sometimes it gets very close. I do remember the fact that uh, the cameraman saying, oh, fellas, hey, we have to slow this down. I know it'll look terrific on camera, but when we come in close, we have to really slow it down, otherwise it'll never sell. Nobody will see anything. <laughs> Sterling was very much interested in the martial arts at that time and was taking lessons from um, Bruce and suggested that we use him as a recurring character and wrote the pilot script of the series um, which followed the concept of the movie quite closely uh, to introduce 
uh, and and set up the situation and the relationship between the Franciscus character and, and Bruce. Where am I? Trying to learn how to fight, not how to think. May it be well with you, Mike. Bruce is a very complex human being. Um, first of all, there was no pretense about Bruce Lee. He was very much aware of who he was, what his roots were, what his background was. He was very proud of being Chinese. He was very proud of his martial arts. He was a perfectionist when it came to what he did, both in terms of martial arts and in front of the camera. If you try to remember, you will lose. Empty your mind. Be formless. Shapeless. Like water. Now, you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Put it into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now, water can flow or creep or drip or crash water, my friend. Despite the quality of his work in Longstreet, the racial attitudes of the Hollywood studios caused Lee to be rejected for the lead role in the TV series Kung Fu. After Bruce died, I came back to the States, interviewed Sterling Siliphant, who had also created Streets of San Francisco, and he confirmed the story about the fact that the network really wouldn't let him build up Bruce's part any larger than it was. <laughs> 